So uh, just like the other micro conferences, so this was a change in the schedule I was talking about. Skip. In the beginning. So, uh, so okay, uh, for yours. Okay, so um, today we have um, several governor in the, um, in the corner, um, but if you if if we want to just assuming that we have the um, um, putting apart the fair governor or the bank bank governor. We have two governors having some logic inside. Um, it's the stepwise governor and the um, power allocator governor. Both of them are relying on the periodic sampling of the temperature. So the stepwise is quite, quite easy in terms of logic inside because when the temperature is still raising, then you just increase the mitigation effect. And when the, the temperature is dropping, then you decrease the, the cooling effect of your cooling device. So it's just working fine. But the problem is when you have cooling devices with a lot of different states, that can happen, for example, with the idle injection cooling device, when you, where you, you have one, 100 cooling state. Basically, um, you reach on some devices idle, doing idle injection. Uh, you have between 26 and 40. That's what the interval of cooling state I've, I found, where the system has to, uh, where the system is reaching the um, temperature stability when mitigating. So that means the stepwise has to wait uh, 40 times the sampling rate before reaching the state. Um, so this, this is all the, uh, working now? OK. Uh, so this is, this is particularly a problem with pole thermal zones, where there is a polling interval. And then every step can only t it only happens after after a polling interval, right? So it takes uh, you, you you can compute the time needed to reach if you have many steps, yeah, you can compute the time to, to reach the full cooling uh, by you know multiplying the number of states by the, the the polling interval, which then can can be quite large, and that that, that that's problematic sometimes. Yes. So. Because of that, um, you can increase, well, decrease the, the sampling period. So you will be sampling more. But the more you, sa you sample, the more you do logic, the more you are consuming CPU, and the more you are uh, overeating the CPU. So you're adding more, more work to do cooling while the CPU is trying to do a lot of work. Uh, which is not really good. And the problem is, well, if you have this uh, delay before the stepwise is able to increase the state until it reaches the state where the cooling device can mitigate and stabilize the temperature, then you, can, you have overshoot and undershoot in terms of temperature, which is not very good because overshoot, you can have big overshoot reaching a critical um, temperature shutting down the system, or you can have undershoot, and undershoot means you lose a power uh, capacity, computation capacity. So that's for the CPU, but that can be for the GPU too. On the other side, we have the IPA. So um, the IPA stabilizes the temperature. It's supposed to do um, some kind of flat figure of the temperature when where the the, um, the temperature is close to the temperature limit, so which is the best um, figure uh, shape, and it's based on the PID loop. So this PID loop is well 
when you do mitigation stuff, usually you use a PID loop where you can adapt the, the, the instruction of the cooling effect based on the situation. The disadvantage of this, um, um, of the power allocator governor, is the logic inside is very complex and there is a lot of math involved. And if you don't have a very good knowledge of how works the IPA and the PID loop, then it's very hard to configure to do the setup. So for the each thermal zone, you have coefficient. This coefficient is part of the equation of the PID loop, and it will depend on the ambient temperature, and it will depend on the workload, it will depend on the platform, and if you don't know how to find this coefficient, the PID loop is not working very well, and the result is, um, is a kind of uh, signal jittering around the, the, the temperature limit. Um, and last uh, disadvantage is the IPA only works if you have devices and cooling devices with the energy model. So I think that your last bullet is the most restrictive one. I mean, that because, you know, this means that <laughs> currently we have energy models for CPUs only. Yeah, so and GPU. Yeah, yeah, okay. So. This means that the, the PID, gov the, the, uh, the power allocator governor ca cannot be used in the majority of cases, basically. Yeah. So the proposal here, so it's just all, yeah, question, sorry. You will answer that later, but you, for the power allocator, you say that it's quite hard to set and tune the PID. You will use a PID in stepwise. Why that will be easier to tune this PID? That's the okay. all theoretical aspect of the proposal. So the proposal is um, maybe what we can do is try to find a solution where we can have a simple logic like the, the stepwise governor and um, having a smooth stabilized temperature figure. So it means we reduce the number of overshoot and undershoot. In order to do that, we need to find out the temperature speed estimation. We have to find the speed, the temperature speed change, well, the variation of the uh, the speed of the variation of the temperature. Um, and we don't do sampling. If we have the temperature speed, then we don't need sampling because we should be able to predict when we will reach the next, um, the, the next uh, limit. So instead of doing sampling all the time, we predict and oh, I, I, I kind of disagree with the statement that we don't need sampling anymore in this case. So you need sampling in order to predict things. So you need it for that different purpose, but, but you still need it. Because so, if you don't sample, you don't know how things are, uh, what's going on. Yeah, so um, let's, let me define sampling. Sampling is you, samp you, you sample, you take, uh, you read the temperature at periodic period. Uh, periodic intervals, right? And so, it, it's fixed. This interval is fixed. So you, you are just saying that you, we we may not need to do the like constant sampling interval yes. sampling. Yeah. So you use the enough. you use the speed, and you can use the speed to set a timer, yeah. and the timer is the place where you read the the temperature. So if we have the speed, we can do an estimation of when we reach uh, a specific um, temperature. And of course, the temperature is, the speed of the, the temperature variation change depending on the cooling state we have. So the higher we are in the, um, in the performance state, the higher we will have 
uh, temperature variation speed. So in this example, um, we have the temperature crossing the low limit of the hysteresis for the temperature. So we can imagine that the, the um, uh, yeah. So th this red zone is the zone where we want to keep the temperature of the system. When we have we cross the low limit, then we can, at this moment, we get an interrupt because it's a result. Then we read the time. And when we cross the upper limit of this, uh, this result, then we read again the temperature and we can deduce the speed of the temperature variation for a specific state. At this moment, we can say, okay, um, I was able to, I, I, I cross during this amount of time, I, I did this pass in the temperature and cross from the low to, to the upper limit. So if I reduce, the t so that's an assumption the logic is doing. If I reduce the, um, the I add a cooling effect, then um, after this same amount of time, I should cross the, um, temperature, the, 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 the low limit temperature. And you set a timer equal to the DT0. Of course, it's, this assumption is wrong because you cannot, uh, you have, it's not linear, so we can reduce the effect but still have the temperature raising up. At this moment, you see the temperature, you can read the temperature limit because you have a, uh, the variation of the temperature and variation of the time again, and you can have for the state, you can have a second speed. And you do the same for the next one. And you find that the temperature is dropping at this moment. I think the figure is wrong there. Yeah, I did a mistake with the temperature. Um, So if we assume the temperature is now in the hysteresis, the point is in the, this hysteresis value. What we want is we want in average, the average speed of the, the temperature limit to be close to zero, to be zero, okay? So that means if we compute the average temperature for all this speed, and we assume they are equal to zero, that means uh, we know that the time variation is always greater than zero. Then in order to have that equal to zero, that means we have the vari temperature variation equal to zero. So what we need is to find a way to make this um, this sum with factors equal to zero. Why factors? Because these factors will give the duration we will propagate to the to the to the to the different uh, state. So that's the theory. The idea <laughs> is the <laughs> is the beginning. <laughs> So what we, what we need is find these uh, IBC factors, and these IBC factors will, will give us um, the duration of being on the different state during an amount of time um, defined by the sum of the dt. And, but the, the, the question is how we can find this a ABC? Shall we... Um, repeat three times to the same thing and given that resolve this equation or sh should we use arbitrary values i don't really like that and what will happen if we use too longer duration uh, how do we prevent overshoot and undershoot during this duration yes that's something ex 
experimental I would like to do uh, in order to, to try to have a self-adaptive logic given the temperature and the, the behavior of the temperature of the system. So, so, so just one comment, because I, um, there is um, a big change actually in the thermal behavior of the board just for a few degree ambient temperature um, variation of one, two, or three degree, the consequences internally of the temperature of the stock, it's, it's very big. The impact is very big. So that means if we do a setup of the system, assuming that the ambient temperature is 21 degree, and we say, okay, 21 degree, we can mitigate nicely the temperature with a sampling rate of 100 millisecond, but that with two, at 23 degrees is no longer true. At 25 is even worse. So that means this sampling period is might be always wrong because of that. And trying to find an algorithm which is able to use the speed, find out the speed, and do the sampling, but sampling, um, a variable sampling, and trying always to find out the same, the, the, the best um, duration for the cooling state will adapt automatically of the change of the ambient temperature. Okay. So it also depends on the, uh, on the uh, form factor of the system. Because if, the, if this is a thermally challenge, let's just say design with a very thin form factor, then this is going to heat up very quickly. Uh, so I think so. I don't know. May, maybe the a good way to um, to start to, uh, would be to think about like when uh, when the stepwise governor needs to bump up the the cooling state by more than one level in one go, right? Because that would be like a step in this direction. Like maybe we can, there, there, there can be like, say if, 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 if the temperature crosses like two, three points at the same in one go, then we may bump up the, 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 the cooling state by not just but one step, but proportionally to the temperature, you know, increase or something like that. Yeah, but the, 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 the issue with that is the, um, is the, the, the um, temperature drop is not linear with the with the step. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah, but, but so it's hard to figure out how many steps you have to do because it's it's not linear. Uh, yeah, but you still so it is linear to a, to an approximation, right? Because the, you can always approximate a function with. A, straight line to some extent right <laughs> it's it's just a matter of of the of the of the uh of the angle right yeah. the, um so this is the fir first comment and the other is like well that it still is better than just doing one step at a time daniel uh, Question on elementary question on trying to understand uh, um, the content, the, the control system that you are designing. So um, when you have the, um, the the graph of temperature over time, there is uh, um, you're not just measuring. At some point, you uh, you will uh, you will cool. So um, the so the and you're saying that you want to. Uh, to find the mm, uh, optimal uh, uh, sampling intervals so that you solve for that equation and uh, the cooling, like the control system would, uh, like a control system, there's some input, some output, and those um, coefficient are the output of your algorithm. Is that what? what? Yes. yes, because Okay, so and, and, you has, and you decided that you want three uh, past values. You want to operate over. And that's yes. That's yeah. Let me clarify that. That's yeah, you are correct. Um, so, 
Obviously, if you have always the temperature rising, you have a speed, temperature variation speed, positive. What you want is to have a temperature speed negative. So when you have a positive uh, one and a negative one, then you have to find out how long you will stay in uh, the negative one to compensate, balance, yeah. to balance and to be zero. And it's these factors gives you the duration. So it depends on, on what cooling state you are uh, in the, so we, the assumption is that there is one cooling device with a set of states and each state has a, uh, influences the temperature in some way such that the, the, there is a constant speed of temperature changes in while in the state. Um, but for, for, forgive my ignorance, but the, the cooling um, state, right, you, you can either be cooling or not be cooling. There is no such a thing as cooling faster, right? There is. Yeah, a, there is. Oh, there okay. is. Yeah, there, there is. There may be like a hundred of cooling states uh, for a cooling device, and each each of them is a level of activity, as I said in the, uh, up front, like in the terminology slide. So, so if there are, there are, there is a hundred, then each level is means that like if you think of a cooling device as a fan, like for example, then it means that the yeah, fan is speed, nice, speed, nice. Fa faster and faster. Yeah. And so the speed of a fan will influence your, uh, your, your parameter, the, your, the coefficient you find? Yes. Right. Okay, okay. So the fast, if you see the temperature, the faster the, the fan is um, rotating, the faster is, is cooling down the system, and the faster you see the temperature dropping. If it is very slow, then you have the temperature increase will reduce, and the more you have the, it's like, like when you accelerate and you reach a vitesse limit, and the the you accelerate with your car, and when the yeah. the more you 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 are reaching the limit, and the, but the you only said the state actuation, you didn't propose an algorithm. Is that correct? Yes, right. Just like yes, time. that's why I say it's all theoretical, yeah. because theoretically, if we are able to solve this, then we have this temperature uh, being staying equal to zero and being in this hysteresis. Um, in this uh, examples, uh, I see that uh, the primer use case are desktop servers and so on there. Cooling is very important and uh, embedded devices, they have other problem, so it can be too cool and we need to be a bit more warmer to keep operational temperature. So is it something for thermal zone framework to keep actually things warm, not only cool? Yeah, but it's, it's uh, if, I, if I'm correct, this uh, warming device is just one state, right? Oh, not necessarily. So you, so so the the the, the I I guess the point is that the the in some cases the, the system needs to be like hot enough to operate, right? Because if it, the temperature drops below a certain point, it will not be able to operate anymore. So the answer is yes. This in theory is a matter of uh, you know the the, the problem is not just cooling. So the same frame, framework can be used for that in theory, but in practice it has never been used for it. So, <laughs> so it's like, well, we can do that, in, but, but we need to adjust it probably for this use case, because then you kind of need to look at reverse, you know, at things in, in reverse order. Like we don't want to, uh, so the, um, uh, f falling on, of the temperature will, will need to trigger actions. In, in that use case, right? Yeah. That, that, that's, but, but yeah, in principle, we can do it. Doing it. So the, like from the, so the correct line which you are seeing is operational temperature is just not like cooling temperature. It is. Yeah, but but then, then then you would need to create like a reverse thermal zone then just for this purpose. Uh, okay. I mean, if you really need something like that right now, you can always have a busy loop thread 
<laughs> running all the time. <laughs> and your cooling device would be to slow it down, <laughs> don't run it as often. Yeah, if you're really in dire need before they figure it out, that's an option. Yeah, but, so this is like uh, uh, mostly about like adjusting your operation conditions to the to your needs, like because you can <laughs> you can always have a loop, but you never know how much heat it generates actually. Oh, the temperature. Oh, uh, yeah, but but then you need to hook it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the you know so the heating device is an uh, analogy of a cooling device. So it can be multiple. There can be multiple states, and then you know. Uh, the problem with heating or keeping some operational temperature, uh, there are different strategies. Like if you're using only water level strategy, then you make it too much uh, jumps and sometimes it is not good. So you need to keep it a bit more uh, stable and to keep it more stable, you need some profiles about your device and, uh, and so on. So this is a PID problem, right? In which you have to adjust the yeah. parameters. I wanted to the, to mention in um, maybe it's not the title of this slide deck, but on the on the conference page uh, you wrote PID, uh, right? A PID uh, controller like the the classic theory, proportional, integral, derivative, but seems uh, derivative only, right? Because you seem to only look at the difference. You see what I mean? Yes, yes. It, okay. Uh, it's, I put PID, but I changed my mind because mm. it's, um, when I was thinking about the algorithm, I said, yeah, it's more time-based or speed-based or thing. Maybe at the end, we, we end up with uh, some kind of PID, mm. maybe, but uh, it's too early. Yeah, because for example, in the completely different uh, situation, uh, frequency scaling, uh, the um, enthalpy state used to be uh, to have the code for PID, but that it, the only non-zero parameters were the proportional one. So yeah, PID, but then at the end of the day, it was uh, proportional. So. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, in, in this example, like the the speed for each of these cooling states is going to vary significantly based on like the system load, right? Like how much heat is generating if, like, say you have idle time. So that means the speed for each cooling device is going to be changing over time. Is there any sort of like smoothing or averaging you you're in, you expect to add for like because the the factors you describe are also going to change over time if the speeds change over time, right? So like, is there what's what's the strategy for dealing with that? It's the right, same like, as for, for the ambient temperature, right? This is the same problem because... Right. Yeah. So, so is the expectation that the factors are going to be changing constantly then? Yes. And your exposition is that those factors are the output of a, of a control loop. Yes. So at every kind of yes, time step, have you have ABC, ABC, ABC. Is that right? Yes. But so it's not like three fixed numbers. That will they happen only at the beginning of the mitigation. I mean, so you have a mitigation episode, so you, have, or you are about to over it, and then at the beginning, you have this measurement, and you, you, div you find the factors. And then when the mitigation ends up... It's, it's over, the control right. is done, you know?